Hi, everyone. I'm the Reverend Ann Dieterle. I'm the rector at Calvary Episcopal Church in um, Columbia, Missouri, which you probably know because I'm putting this on Calvary's YouTube and Facebook pages. Um, I'm making a video today about a class that I am starting this coming Tuesday at seven o'clock in person at Calvary. Um, and because I decided to do it kind of at the last minute, uh, right around the holiday season, um, we didn't have a chance to really do a whole lot of advertising, at least um, outside of just our uh, internal communication. So I didn't have a chance to announce it much um, on Sundays and things like that. So I'm going to be teaching a course. Um, it's a broader group that I'm starting or a broader thing called Cinema Theology. And I got the idea from a YouTube channel called um, Cinema Therapy. So um, thanks to them. And uh, I'm starting out with the hero's journey. And my tagline for this is movies, the Bible, and how is God calling us today? And the format that I have used when I've taught this class before has been to show a movie clip on one of the uh, stages and phases of the hero's journey, which I'm going to show you a, a diagram of in a minute. Um, then to talk about, uh, give a scripture lesson that goes with the stage or phase, and then have a chance for participants to share as they are comfortable, um, things from their own life, which resonate um, in terms of what, where this stage is speaking to them. And so I'm going to try, we're going to test my um, Zoom skills. It's been a little while since I've done a bunch of Zoom as a host, um, but I'm going to share my screen and show you a little PowerPoint all right, I think that you are looking at my little PowerPoint slideshow. I'm going way back to the 1990s here. Uh, so here is just, it's one of many, if you Google the hero's journey, and hopefully I'm not tramping on um, somebody's uh, copyright. I don't remember where I got this, to be honest. But if you do a Google search, you'll find a bunch of these little icons or graphics about what the hero's journey is. Um, you'll see here looking for my the other one that I have printed. Um, it's 17 stages divided into three phases. Uh, the phases here are not um, laid out so clearly, but that separation, initiation, and return are the three phases. And um, I'm going to talk today about what the archetypes that you will find um, as you go into the hero or heroine, heroine's journey. Um, one of the things about the hero's journey, I've taught this before, and I've used, you know, there's a bunch of other examples that could be used other than the ones that I tend to use in my classes. But um, I go with what I know with, uh, what I know, which uh, tends to revolve around, if you know me, you won't be surprised, uh, Star Wars. Wars, Lord of the Rings, and things like that. Um, historically, just because of where we are, and this is not a criticism, it's just an observation and, and somewhat factual, it's been very uh, male and very white. And so I'm going to try, and uh, particularly in these archetypes a little bit, and in our class to broaden that, because uh, some of the more recent uh, movies that have borrowed from this, uh, from this template have uh, been updated or represent our diverse humanity a little bit more. So here are... Um, some archetypes that you will meet in the hero's journey. Uh, first is the hero or heroine. And you will see um, around this uh, familiar faces, if you're a Star Wars or the Lord of the Rings fan, uh, both Luke Skywalker and Rey are main heroes from the original and the sequel trilogy. Um, I've got uh, T'Challa from Black Panther. I have not seen the most recent Black Panther, so or Wakanda Forever, I've not seen. so, And I'm not in this class going to use anything more recent than um, that has come out in the last 12 months because uh, we're in spoiler alert territory in that case. Um, anything else is fair game, though. You'll notice uh, in the top left-hand corner here, or it's uh, top my left, I don't do that mirror thing very well, but um, is Moana. If you are um, a Disney fan or like car animation, um, that actually is one of my favorite movies that has come out in recent years, along with Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. This was um, a surprising one to me. Um, I, I've I like the Spider-Man movies, um, but this is, it's just a good flick. Um, and if you're looking for, if you're a parent um, or an, an aunt or an uncle or a grandparent who's looking for, who, who is attracted to this and is looking for ways to talk to their kids about it, how they might use it as part of their um, 
life uh, journey, um, spiritual autobiography, and, and thinking more deeply about that. Um, and these are two good movies to use because uh, they have almost complete cycles. Um, but I am I'm getting uh, getting away from myself. This is going to be too long of a video. Uh, but then we've got. Um, both Aragorn and uh, Frodo from Lord of the Rings. Uh, this is Miles Morales, um, by the way, from Into the Spider-Verse. And um, he is here with, um, well, anyway. And then we've got uh, Sam Wilson uh, here as Captain America. Uh, if you watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the Disney Plus series, um, that is from this particular, that's where that image is from. So the hero or heroine, basically the protagonist. Um, then we've got the mentor. So this may not surprise you at all. Um, there's a, a fairly famous scene um, in the original Star Wars, of course, um, where Obi-Wan uh, says to Darth Vader, strike me down and I will become more powerful than you can imagine. Um, that is a traditional death of the mentor um, trope in um, films. And, in, and that is a stage in the hero's journey. But again, I mentioned it tends to be uh, fairly male and fairly white. I have added uh, General Organa from the sequel trilogy, who is a mentor to the new heroes, uh, particularly to Rey, and then the grandmother from Moana, um, who is the, I think she says she gets to be the um, the nutty village lady. So the mentor is a trope. And I think most of us can think, um, you know, we had uh, back in November, All Saints Day, who was our mentor? We think about who was our mentor in our faith. Um, everybody has a mentor somewhere. I hope you have a mentor somewhere and hopefully they were a good mentor. And of course, uh, Gandalf and Dumbledore, who you could be forgiven for interchanging because they are very similar uh, characters. Um, next, we have the ally or the allies. Um, and these are hero, the hero's friends who help to get them through um, the tough times and just generally in life. So we've got um, Sam, who is, I mean, Sam is the ally. Uh, and then also Legolas and Gimli, who serve as allies more for Aragorn. Um, and then the Dora Milaje from Black Panther. And then, of course, Han and Leia and uh, Ron and Hermione. And then... Um, I don't think I had it. I, on my original uh, sheet, I had Dorothy from the Wizard of Oz in the hero or heroine slot. Um, but the lion, uh, the cowardly lion, the scarecrow, and the tin man are also um, part allies. Uh, this It's a good way to say here that, or a good time to say that sometimes you end up with um, people who fit uh, several different archetypes or tropes. Um, Han Solo is one of those. Um, and so is Leia. I had her in the mentor category. But again, the, the friends of the protagonist, the ones without whom the hero cannot really get very far or maybe doesn't get as far as they go. Um, Frodo, in a, one of my favorite scenes, actually says so. Um, you know, Frodo wouldn't gotten, have gotten very far without Sam. Um, and uh, that scene and that speech that precedes it, by the way, will end up being part of the class that I teach. It's one that's, that always makes me cry. Okay, the Herald. So the Herald appears in the beginning to announce the need for change in the hero or heroine's life. Uh, so you've got Hagrid, you know, his famous, you're a wizard, Harry. Um, when uh, R2-D2 shows up and Luke actually accidentally triggers uh, Leia's video message, uh, Leia or R2, well, I guess R2 in this case would be the Herald. And then um, going to um, a heroine, uh, Diana, Prince, Diana Prince, um, Trevor, uh, when he shows up, am I getting that name right? I'm all, all of a sudden blanking on it. But Chris Pine's character ends up being the herald when um, two of the World War, uh, the planes uh, crash through the barrier and uh, he announces that the world is at war um, and that spurs Diana into action. So again, the herald appears in the beginning to announce the need for change and um, Again, I'm, I'm guessing that this is one that might resonate pretty powerfully um, with others. You can probably think of someone who told you something either new or something about yourself who, that you hadn't thought about before. And so it caused you to see yourself in a new way um, and, and charted you on a course. So the Herald... 
the tricksters or the comic relief. Um, you can argue with me, by the way, about who um, fits what category, um, and you may uh, take issue with some of my choices, and that's fair. Um, this is according to Reverend Dan, and um, it, I'm clearly I'm not fallible, so, or not infallible, excuse me. I think, though, I'm going to take you on if you argue against uh, Mary and Pippin here from Lord of the Rings. Um, and then I have Korg, you'll recognize maybe from the MCU and the Thor franchise in particular. Um, I would argue that um, Shuri I, I acts somewhat, she could be ally for sure as well, but is acts somewhat as the comic relief in the first Black Panther movie. And then um, BB-8, if you think about some of the funnier scenes, to me anyway, um, in the sequel trilogy, BB-8 tends to be a part of those. So the tricksters, the comic relief, and you probably have, um, if you know about um, Carl Jung and archetypes. Um, the jester is one of uh, Carl Jung's uh, archetypes. And so this would, and by archetype, I just mean like a, a, a character trope, if you will. That's not, that's not really what uh, Carl Jung meant. But if you think about, um, you know, if you think about, well, who's a good father, who's a good mother, like that's getting into what archetypes are. Um, so, um, but the jester is one for Carl Jung, and that would be an analogy an out analogical um an anal I'm not saying that well <laughs> I don't edit well as a skill so this is staying in uh, but uh, the tricksters uh the shapeshifter uh, basically it's someone who you don't know if they're really an ally or an enemy um and uh, some of these folks are going to show up in um a another archetype um but and some of them are literally shapeshifters. Um, Maui, who's in the bottom on my screen, the bottom left-hand side, is literally a shapeshifter. Um, Loki from the Four franchise, um, Gollum uh, is a shapeshifter. And then um, in the bottom, again, in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier series, uh, Baron Von Zemo, who is uh, the, the enemy in um, Age of no, Captain America Civil War uh, shows up and he's is kind of a question mark. He does uh, act as ally, but he has his own purposes. So anyway, he fits into that shapeshifter category. Uh, and maybe you have shapeshifters in your own life. Maybe you have folks who you're not sure you trust their motives um, or you know you can't trust their motives, but um, you know you may partner with them from time to time uh, for various reasons or, or at times choose to give them the benefit of the doubt and the benefit of the doubt that they can change. All right, the threshold guardian. Um, I printed this whole thing out here. The guardian or the threshold guardian tests the hero before they face great challenges. Um, they can appear in pretty much any part of the story, um, but their message to the hero is basically go home, forget it. Um, and they are also a signal that there's danger ahead to the audience when they are listening. Um, usually the uh, hero has to prove their worth uh, in some way, shape, or form. Now, the threshold guardian is, or the guardian is not always um, uh, full, full of malice. Uh, so on the one hand, you've got the stormtroopers, but on the other hand, you've got um, Moana's parents um, and the sorting hat from Harry Potter. If you look on the right hand, now I'm going to date myself probably, there's a, a wonderful old movie called The Never Ending Story. Um, and that's what, this is the Southern Oracle there. And that is a threshold guardian as well. Um, so, you know, and I was, uh, there's an ordination process that you have to go through if you want to, or if you feel called to be ordained to the priesthood or the um or the diaconate, and that is, uh, there are threshold guardians there. So that resonates with me. Um, and certainly there are um, challenges, maybe great challenges, we can argue about that. But um, the, and it's not meant to be gatekeepers, although sometimes they function that way. Sometimes it just tests your mettle, um, as it were, or tests your sense of commitment. Um, so threshold guardian. And finally, the shadow. Uh, the shadow is especially effective if it mirrors the hero in some way. And that's where I've um, paired these folks up here. Although I'm not sure, I've, I've started to doubt my own um, pairing of Aragorn and Sauron from Lord of the Rings. Um, but uh, T'Challa and Killmonger from the Black Panther film, again, um, you know, they're essentially, they're very similar in a lot of ways, uh, but they take different paths in the way that they um, choose to 
uh, tap into the power they have. Um, and then, of course, Ray and Kylo Ren uh, from the sequel trilogy and Frodo and um, Smeagol or Gollum. And, you know, I said that some of these characters can appear in different archetypes and specifically with Frodo and um, and um, Gollum, I think it's particularly powerful. And when Sam, you know, and Sam has barely an unkind bone in his body, but one of the things that triggers him is Gollum. I think one of the reasons that Frodo is so defensive of Gollum is that he sees um, how that could easily be his own path and might be his own path if he ends up um, as he carries the ring. So um, we all have a uh, you know, again, the shadow highlights the hero's internal struggle. And we all have a shadow side. Uh, Richard Rohr, uh, the Franciscan Catholic monk and theologian, frequently talks about how um, you have to do some shadow boxing if you're going to attain to any kind of spiritual maturity. Um, and the sense of darkness that we have in ourselves, um, you know, we can over identify with it, which is um, kind of where Kylo Ren went um, in his path, um, or we can deny it entirely, uh, which is also not healthy. Um, and so to do that middle ground, if you will, or the other alternative is to do what Richard Rohr calls a shadow boxing, kind of understanding that that shadow lives with you um, and, and learning to have some dialogue with it. So anyway, that's the archetypes of the hero's journey. I'm going to stop this slideshow. Uh, this has been a long enough video. I don't know if that whets your appetite at all, but um, that's going to be some of the people who you will meet in the uh, video clips that I share a uh, show of the story. Um, and if you just want to kind of take a look at it yourself, then that's fine too. So uh, if you've made it this far, thanks for bearing with me. And again, our class is going to be um, the next several Tuesdays from 7 to 8.30 in person at Calvary. We're going to meet in the library to start. I have no idea how many people will show, so we may need a bigger space. Um, but uh, come with, uh, we'll have some popcorn, but come with your own drinks if you want. Um, and we'll watch some movie clips and have some discussion. All right. Happy New Year, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.